These are the top six monthly paying dividend ETFs, in my opinion, for cash flow. All these options have a high dividend and they pay monthly. But in addition, I'm gonna throw in a seventh non-ETF option for you for even more cash flow. Remember, I'm not a financial advisor and this is not financial advice. Our first ETF is SPHD, also known as the Invesco S&P 500 High Dividend Low Volatility ETF. The ETF is composed of 50 securities traded on the S&P 500 index that historically have provided high dividend yields and low volatility. The top holdings are Ultra Group, AT&T, Boston Properties, Dow Inc., International Paper Company, Kinder Morgan Inc., Simon Property Group, Verizon, Walgreens Boots Alliance, and the Williams Companies. This ETF has a five-year average yearly return of 5.28%, and if you invested $10,000 five years ago, your investment would now be worth $12,930.90. SPHD has a dividend yield of 3.97% and an expense ratio of 0.3%. Investors can expect a monthly dividend of 12 to 15 cents per share owned a month based on the past three years of dividend payouts. As nice as that dividend yield is, it only goes up from here, but be warned, with a higher dividend comes a higher risk. We want to be on the lookout for dividend traps. These are investments that are offering very high yields, but the overall asset is losing value. This is critical for investors to be aware of, especially if you hold these in a taxable account. You'll pay taxes on your dividends, but your asset is overall losing money. So you're effectively paying the government to lose money, which makes no sense. Our next ETF is PEY, also known as the Invesco High Yield Equity Dividend Achievers ETF. This ETF seeks to track the investment results of the NASDAQ US Dividend Achievers 50 Index. PEY has 51 holdings, and its top holdings include Altria, Franklin Resources, Healthcare Services Group, Kennedy Wilson Holdings, Lyondell Basel Industries, Northwest Bank Shares, Philip Morris International, Telephone and Data Systems, Universal Corporation, and Verizon. This ETF has a five-year average yearly return of 6.93%, and if you invested $10,000 five years ago, your investment would now be worth $13,966.03. PEY has a dividend yield of 4.21% and an expense ratio of 0.52%. Investors can expect a monthly dividend of five to six cents per share a month based on the past three years of dividend payouts. Our next ETF is Devo, also known as the Amplify CWP Enhanced Dividend Income ETF. Devo is an actively managed ETF of high quality large cap companies with a history of dividend growth along with a tactical cover call strategy on individual stocks. Devo is strategically designed to offer high levels of total return on a risk adjusted basis. Devo has 29 holdings and its top holdings include Chevron, Johnson & Johnson, JP Morgan Chase & Company, McDonald's, Microsoft, Procter & Gamble, Goldman Sachs, Home Depot, and Visa. This ETF has a five-year average yearly return of 10.5%, and if you invested $10,000 five years ago, your investment would now be worth $16,459.79. Devo has a dividend yield of 4.86% and an expense ratio of 0.55%. Investors can expect a monthly dividend of 13 to 14 cents per share per month based on the past three years of dividend payouts. From here on, we get into some very risky territory. The next three ETFs offer high yields, but they use something called covered calls to make that happen, just like our last ETF, Devo. Basically, the fund managers buy stocks and they write options contracts with those stocks as collateral. In return, they collect a cash premium. If the stock stays within a certain price range for a certain amount of time, the fund gets to keep the premium, which they then use to pay out high yields. But because markets are volatile, the price could move outside of the price range and the fund would end up losing money because it would have to sell the shares as part of the options contract. These kinds of ETFs haven't been around for a long time, so that's part of the reason why they're more risky. We don't know how they perform in different market conditions. So if you decide to invest in these, you might have to keep a close eye on your investments. With these ETFs, you can't just monitor price action, you have to monitor the covered call strategy as well. So these are more complex and more risky than your average ETF. Our next ETF is JEPI, also known as the JP Morgan Equity Premium Income. Its goal is to deliver monthly distributable income and equity market exposure with less volatility. JEPI is a covered call ETF that works through equity linked notes. It uses its holdings to write options contracts but it does this through a financial institution, hence the equity link note. I cover ELNs and JEPI in more detail. If you're interested, I'll leave a link in the description down below and at the end of this video. JEPI has 136 holdings and its top holdings include AbbVie, Bristol Myers Squibb, Coca-Cola, MasterCard, Pepsi, Progressive, Hershey's, Travelers, US Bancorp, and Visa. This ETF has an average yearly return of 12.08%. JEPI has only been around since May of 2020, but if you invested $10,000 at inception, your investment would now be worth $13,810 
$1,000.59. Jeppy has a dividend yield of 11.95% and an expense ratio of 0.35%. Investors can expect a monthly dividend of 30 to 50 cents a month per share based on the past three years of dividend payouts. Our next ETF is JEPQ, also known as the JP Morgan NASDAQ Equity Premium Income ETF. This ETF seeks to generate income through selling options and investing in stocks based on the NASDAQ 100 index and like JEPI also uses ELNs. JEPQ has 84 holdings and its top holdings include Google, Amazon, Apple, Microsoft, Nvidia, and Tesla. This ETF was created in June of 2022 and has a yearly return of negative 1.86%. You invested $10,000 when the ETF was first available. Your investment would now be worth $9,835.32. JEPQ has a dividend yield of 11.75% and an expense ratio of 0.35%. Investors can expect a monthly dividend of 30 to 50 cents per month per share based on the history of dividend payouts. Now this ETF lost money since it was created, but I still think it's worth considering. The reason why is because it's based on tech stocks and tech stocks have taken a heavy decline in their price recently. So if tech stocks rally, which I think they will in the future, this ETF is poised to gain as a result of that. And topping off our ETFs in dividend yield is SVOL, also known as the Simplify Volatility Premium ETF. This ETF seeks to provide investment results before fees and expenses that correspond to approximately one fifth to three tenths the inverse the performance of the CBOE volatility index, short term futures index while also seeking to mitigate extreme volatility. SVOL works very differently than all the other options in this video. It makes money based on the volatility index or the VIX. It starts by taking short positions on VIX, which means that the fund managers think that volatility is going to go lower or stay low. They also buy VIX call options. This helps protect from volatility spikes just in case fear and uncertainty kick up, which would send volatility up as well. SVOL has only been around since May of 2021 and has an annual return of 6.23%. You invested $10,000 when SVOL was first created, your investment would now be worth $11,194.82. SVOL has a dividend yield of 17.79% and an expense ratio of 0.66%. Investors can expect a monthly dividend of 25 to 32 cents a month per share based on the past two years of dividend payouts. And now our bonus option for investors who are seeking cash flow. It's CII, also known as the BlackRock Enhanced Capital and Income Fund. CII is a closed end fund. A closed end fund is just like an ETF in that it takes a pool of money and invest it. But a closed-end fund can't make new shares like an ETF can. So once all the shares are sold, no new ones are created. CII seeks to provide investors with a combination of current income and capital appreciation. It plans on doing this by investing in stocks and selling call options to generate premiums. CII has 54 holdings, and its top holdings include Microsoft, Amazon, Apple, Google, Comcast, Berkshire Hathaway, Corteva, Meta, Visa, and United Health Group. The fund has a five-year average yearly return of 9.98%, and if you invested $10,000 five years ago, your investment would now be worth $16,088.81. CII has a dividend yield of 6.9% and an expense ratio of 0.89%. Investors can expect a monthly dividend of eight to nine cents per month per share based on the past three years of dividend payouts. All right, so here's a special note about SVOL, JEPQ, and covered call ETFs in general. These should be considered high risk. We have very little history so we don't know how they're going to perform in the future, which goes for pretty much every investment, but these especially. In addition, SVOL was probably the only ETF on the market that actually makes money based on a volatility index, so it is experimental at best. Every investor has to balance risk and reward, and that's unique and up to you. It seems like these covered call ETFs seem to be very much in favor given current market conditions, but the market changes and these ETFs might go down in value because of that alone. So be warned and invest at your own risk. Now there's two quick things I want to teach you that every dividend investor should know. First is how much you'll get paid in dividends per share based on the yield. To do this, take your dividend yield, divide it by 100, and multiply this by the price of the stock or ETF. That gets you your yearly dividend if you own one share. Let's expand on this because I know owning one share doesn't really pay out a ton of dividends, but eventually with dollar cost averaging and dividend increases, this can lead to a sizable amount of money. The second thing we're going to learn is how to figure out how much money you need invested to make $1,000 in dividends. Our second formula is $1,000 divided by the dividend yield expressed as a number, which means you divide it by 100. This gives you the amount you need invested to make $1,000 a year in dividends. The numbers you calculate with this formula might seem like a lot, but remember it's a marathon and not a sprint, and I think you have the ability to get to your financial goals. I wish you the best of luck, and I appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. If you found value in it, click that like button, subscribe for more money, finance, and crypto content. I'll see you in the next video. Take care.